Okay, these are the, the few plants that I pulled there a minute ago. Uh, a healthy plant here in my right hand, uh, showing nice green leaves all the way top to bottom. And what brought me in to the spot where I was a second ago was the visible damage that's on these plants here. Um, that plant at least is kind of a full length plant, but some of them have more damage and have very definitely been stunted in the way they grow. This is rather typical uh, residual herbicide damage where residual herbicides are used in beans early on for weed control. If it's very dry, sometimes their activity cuts back in again later in the season when the plant has emerged and it has an effect on the plants, uh, but generally it, they grow out of it. Uh, the very badly stunted ones may be left with more of a, of a long-term problem. Uh, we, we, we found it here in the field where the sprayer was starting, which is fairly common, and also where the, the tractor stopped when the boom was running for a second, a little bit more rate, bang, you see the effect all the way across the way to the boom. Okay, this is the, the, the type of damage that we were getting where you can see that the chlorophyll has been damaged inside in the leaves and leaves, the younger leaves, are looking particularly the worst for wear. They will grow out of it. Uh, these older leaves here uh, have the effect just confined to the edge and generally speaking the leaf will grow back or it'll at least the symptoms will vanish in time. Um, the rest of this plant is relatively healthy compared with the top because it looks like re re rain, I don't know how recently, will have mobilised the chemical. It's been taken up and now it's showing here in the, in, in the top of the plant. If you compare that then to a, a, a plant that got hit much earlier in its development, um, it's, it's much shorter, much smaller, and the overall growth of the plant has been much more adversely affected uh, by the effect of the chemical. So this, this particular plant could suffer a long-term consequence. This one looks like it will grow out of it, and the, some of the other ones that are uh, much stronger today will definitely grow out of it and leave no effect. The other thing that's noticeable in, in the crop, and indeed you'll find it in nearly all bean crops, is the notching along the leaves. That's typical uh, weevil damage, where the adults are coming in, they stand on the leaf and they literally eat it from the edge in. That's why it's notching as, as such. And um, It's not that that was a bigger weevil, it's that the damage occurred when the leaf was smaller, and then as the leaf grows, the, the bite mark looks to be bigger but normally it's just a relatively small amount of, of uh, damage that's done at the edge. This in itself is not an actual problem. Uh, the issue with weevils is that they lay their eggs and uh, when they're on the plant and the eggs subsequently hatch out in the ground and the danger is that they will go and they will um, uh, start eating at the nodules on the roots which make the nitrogen to feed the plant. That's, that's what why we worry about weevils and why we may have to control them. Okay, the other thing that's always important in beans is that the uh, the plant must develop nodules to produce its own nitrogen. That That's critical for a bean crop. Here is, is soil level, uh, there's the root as it pulled up from the ground for me, there's the, the old seed, uh, one of the one of the two cotyledons, and just then right below where the seed germinated we can see little nodules and these are the actual uh, parts of the plant that generate nitrogen, that they trap nitrogen from the air and turn it into a nitrogen form that's available to the crop that's used to feed the crop. Um, what I notice here instantly is that the nodules are taking place right under the seed so the nodulation process happened almost immediately after germination. That's absolutely critical for the crop because it means that it's being fed nitrogen from the word go. If it didn't occur until much later, there's always the possibility that the plant could have been a few uh, weeks old before it would develop its nitrogen source. And there is the danger of hunger and the danger of the crop not growing to its maximum and not generating the maximum yield potential in the process. In this particular plant, all of the, the side roots have pulled off so we can't see any nodulation of the side roots. But in this other plant here, uh, we can see on some of the, um, the, the, the side roots, nodules already formed and also nodules present further down the root profile as I have them here much deeper. 
so probably these ones wouldn't have uh, uh, produced nodules quite as quick as the previous plant but they're still good they're they're very much in the upper area close to the seed they did happen fairly early we can see bigger nodules and, 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 and smaller nodules in there as well so it's still happening which is a good thing um, but, but these nodules are critical for the production of healthy and vigorous early season growth in beans which is also important indirectly to get a plant cover and a ground cover quite quickly to help compete against any weeds that might be surviving in the crop. One of the advantages that many farmers have for beans is that you can use graminicides which kill grasses in a broadleaf crop. So it's a, it's a useful crop in that respect to be able to get at things like wild oats and there's a few wild oats in this crop, there's not very many I would say around the place but just happen to find one and whether it's that particular weed or whether it's going to be canary grass which would also be common enough here in, in, in Cork or maybe even scutch grass if there was some of it in the field or any of the other problem grasses be it perennials, uh, rye grasses. Um, um, wh whatever one that anybody might have, it's just the, the, the bean crop provides an opportunity to kill them, uh, which is very useful in a rotational context.